So previously we talked about um, clonidine and, and also we talked about um, phenylephrine. Okay. So this is an example of a drug that contains phenylephrine. So this is a drug that is um, marketed to relieve sinus pressure and also congestion. Okay, we use congestion in the nose. So for people having nasal congestion, so one one option for them is to have states phenylephrine. Next, we have um, drugs that uh, that act on the beta receptors. So these are beta agonists. So some are beta one agonist, some are beta one and beta two agonist, some are also, some are beta two agonist. So dobutamine is a beta one agonist that causes an increase in the heart rate and the cardiac output. Increases the heart rate and increases the cardiac output. So isoproteranol acts both on the beta one and the beta two agonist. So it acts as both the beta one and beta two agonist. Albuterol is a beta two agonist. Relieves bronchoconstriction. And then you have tebutrin. So where does this act? What does it do? So this is something I'll leave, leave to you to find out. Okay. But this is a very commonly used drug. It's a very famous drug. So next is dopamine. So dopamine is a catecholamine structurally. It's a precursor to norepinephrine or noradrenaline. And we can find the receptors, the dopamine receptors throughout the body and also the central nervous system. This drug acts like epinephrine at high doses, meaning that it can act in, um, at the alpha and also the beta receptors. Okay, so that's when it's at high doses, dopamine can act like epinephrine. And dopamine can cause renal and coronary vasodilatation at low doses. So when you give low doses of dopamine, it can cause dilatation of the vessels in the kidney and also in the heart, okay? The renal and coronary vessels. And dopamine also activates beta-1 receptors in the heart. It's used in the treatment of shock, okay, because it increases heart rate and also increases the cardiac output. So which will all lead to an increase in the blood pressure. And at the same time, it will cause arterial and coronary vasodilatation, as you have mentioned here. So it's that's why it's useful in the treatment of shock. So the action in the renal vascular bed is useful to preserve renal blood flow and also renal function during the reduced overall tissue perfusion in shock. Okay, because you know in shock, so there is a reduction in the perfusion to the tissues okay, in the peripheries. So you don't want to have um, a compromised blood flow to the kidney. Okay, because when you have a compromised blood flow to the kidney, that's going to cause kidney failure and you might eventually um, die because of that. So just a quick recap of types of shock. Okay, so we can have cardiogenic shock due to heart problems, hypovolemic shock, that's it, that is caused by having a little blood volume, okay, Problem. for example, due to a reduce in severe reduction in the venous, um, sorry, in the stroke volume, 
you can have anaphylactic shock, which is caused by a hypersensitivity reaction, septic shock due to infections, and also neurogenic shock caused by damage to the nervous system. So in shock, we would like to use dopamine. Okay? So dopamine is one of the options that can be used in shock. Next, um, we have, um, this is a, a diagram trying to um, show you how the various drugs act on the, I'm sorry, uh, how the drugs act on the receptors, uh, meaning that which drugs are, have a high affinity for which receptors. So for example, um, we have norepinephrine and epinephrine. So epinephrine can act on all receptors, alpha and beta, alpha one or alpha two, beta one or beta two. And then we have the norepinephrine, okay? which is more towards this side. And then we have isoproterenol that acts both on both beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. So clonidine acts mainly on the alpha-2 receptor, whereas phenylephrine mainly on the alpha-1 receptors. Terbutylene mainly on beta-2, whereas dobutamine on beta-1. So in the middle, we have isoproterenol, which acts on the beta-1 and beta-2. So this is a one way to classify the adrenergic agonist okay, according to the affinities of the agonist to the receptors alpha and also beta receptors. So just now we have mentioned the direct acting agents. Now we go to the indirect acting agents. So we have ephedrine phenyl propanolamine which are used as nasal decongestants and also we have amphetamine and it's um, the drugs that act like amphetamine okay so these drugs are cns central nervous system stimulants used for the treatment of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder okay So this is a drug showing um, um, that is used um, that contains pseudoephedrine, okay, pseudoephedrine that is used to treat nasal decongestion, nasal um, congestion, but it's combined with other drugs to treat other symptoms too. So pseudoephedrine, okay, something like ephedrine. So CVS effects of epinephrine, norepinephrine, and isoproterenol. So norepinephrine increases total peripheral resistance and the mean arterial pressure. So norepinephrine stimulates the alpha receptors that leads to constriction of all major vascular beds. It causes constriction of all major vascular beds and this will lead to increase in resistance and pressure. Okay, this will lead to increase in 
resistance and pressure. And the blood pressure increased will cause a reflex increase in the parasympathetic output to the heart. Okay. And which will lower the heart rate. Lowers the heart rate. So this drug is something that if you give, it will cause a combination of effects. Okay. So you might not get the um, wanted effects eventually because you have um, effects that contradict each other. Okay. Because you have an increase in the BP here, but that will lead to a reflex increase in the parasympathetic output to the heart. Okay. Causes a parasympathetic um, reflex, which will cause a lower lowering of the heart rate and that will cause a lowering of the blood pressure. Okay, so it's something like a, a cancelling effect there with norepinephrine. However, epinephrine okay, shows some more like a more consistent effect. So it affects it affects the heart mainly through the beta 1 receptors. Causes well, increase in the heart rate, increase in the cardiac output, which will lead to an increase in the blood pressure. The mean arterial pressure. Because we know from the formula that the, the mean arterial pressure okay, is equal to cardiac output. So this is the blood pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. And the cardiac output equals stroke volume times the heart rate. So if you increase the heart rate, that will lead to an increase in the cardiac output. You increase this, you will increase this. If this is increased, you will get the pressure increased. Okay. So epinephrine, as mentioned previously, it activates all the alpha and beta receptors. But if given system systemically, okay, the heart effects predominate. Okay, you will see a predominantly an effect on the beta one receptors. So it will cause heart rate increase, stroke volume to increase. Okay, and of course, if you when you increase the heart rate, you increase the stroke volume, you will increase the cardiac output. So epinephrine, its effects on the blood pressure, blood pressure and the peripheral resistance are dose dependent. So at low doses of epinephrine, it will cause a, a fall in the peripheral resistance due to vasodilatation. Okay, you have vasodilatation in the skeletal muscle beds. So in the skeletal muscle beds, you have a Vasodilatation. So when you vasodilate, you cause a reduction in the peripheral resistance. However, at high doses, so you will see vasoconstriction, which is caused by the effects on the alpha one. That will balance the beta one effects, which is vasodilatation. So that balancing between the alpha one effects and the beta one effects will lead to minimal or no change in the peripheral resistance. And at higher doses, okay, so we have low, high, higher. So at higher doses, vasoconstriction will predominate. So because of the effects on the alpha one, okay, vasoconstriction, it will lead to increase in the peripheral resistance and also cause an increase in the blood pressure. Okay, that's all for now.